Hi, I'm Gabrielle Lichterman, founder of Hormonology and creator of the Hormone Horoscope. Today I'm going to take you through each week of your monthly cycle, week one, week two, week three, and week four, and basically just give you a brief overview about how your hormones are impacting you each week of your cycle. So let's get started. During your week one, which starts the first day of your period and lasts seven days, estrogen is rising slowly. So yeah. Okay, your week one is your period week, and it may have gotten a bad rap, but it really doesn't deserve it, and here's why. Um, once you get your period pain under control at the start of your week one, which you can use with like, you know, heat patches or pain pills, rising estrogen is actually making this week pretty cool. Um, that's because this hormone is um, boosting your mood, revving your energy, sharpening brain skills. It's making you want to be more social and outgoing and go out of the house and you know, have fun. So this is a week when you're probably going to want to hang with your buds, um, do something silly like um, go miniature golfing or bowling or go to an amusement park, um, have some fun. Um, you also may want to shop for little items, um, usually silly items or colorful items like, you know, colorful nail polish. Uh, when you shop for even practical items, uh, you'll probably go for the more silly version of that item. For instance, if you have to get band-aids, you'll probably get the Disney princess band-aids over the boring taupe. I know I would. <laughs> um, during your week one, your libido rises a bit. And for some women who, you know, don't like messy sex, there is a product on the market called the Instead Soft Cup, uh, which you get at softcup.com or drugstores. I got this at uh, CVS. And it basically works like a diaphragm. You just pop it in and it collects menstrual fluid neatly and discreetly. And I don't get paid to promote this product. It's just really the only product on the market like it. And it's pretty unique. It's pretty cool. So that's your week one. Everything's kind of rising, mood, energy, brain skills. It's good, your period week is good. So let's move on to week two, which is even better. <laughs> um, during your week two, which starts eight days from the onset of your period and lasts through ovulation, estrogen is high and continues to climb. And at the end of your week two, testosterone climbs too. And this hormone combination is great. And that's because it revs your mood, uh, revs your outlook, your energy is through the roof, um, you're eloquent, witty, um, you're fun to be around, you're outgoing, you're social. This is really the best you that you could be. Uh, so this is a really good week to capitalize on um, all these good things. For instance, by pitching your boss a project or starting um, a business, this is really a great week for big projects and big ideas. So uh, week two, week two is also when your uh, libido peaks and your intensity of orgasms peaks. So this is a great time to, you know, have some fun in the bedroom because you're, you know, you have a lot more confidence. You might want to, you know, break out the sexy negligee uh, or do something new and fun with your partner. Um, week two is also when you want to try new stuff. You know, this is the week when uh, weird stuff is going to end up in your shopping basket. Like for instance, uh, Thai basil curry chips kind of nifty, and uh, coconut, no, cactus water. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds really cool, right? So your week two uh, is also when you are going to uh, be splurging a bit. For instance, you might buy a big screen TV or a boat, <laughs> or more likely things like you know tickets to a concert. Uh, things that you probably wouldn't buy in other weeks of your cycle because you might not think you have the money. And the reason uh, you're splurging a little bit more now is because high estrogen is giving you all that optimism. Um, another side effect of all that optimism is you're much more courageous and daring, so um, you might be uh, a little bit more adventurous than usual, do, you know, things that you normally wouldn't, dance on tables or zip lining. Um, this is definitely the week you want to keep safety equipment around in case things get out of hand. <laughs> During your week two, you also tend to want to gussy yourself up a bit. Uh, wear the sexier clothes, more revealing clothes, put on more makeup, wear more accessories. Uh, that's high estrogen pushing you to doll yourself up a bit. Okay, so that's week two. Just to recap, high hormones are really, really revving everything good up. So let's move on to week three, which is sort of the opposite of week two. Week three starts the day after ovulation and lasts eight days. And at the start of your week three, estrogen and testosterone plunge. During the middle, estrogen rises again. And throughout your week three, sedating progesterone is now rising throughout. 
So remember all that great energy and super sharp brain skills from week two? Well, things kind of change in your week three. In your week three, you might want to keep a pillow around because that sedating progesterone I talked about before uh, can really make you sleepy. Uh, it could also muddy up your memory a little bit, uh, make you a bit less eloquent than you were in your week two. Uh, rising progesterone is also amping up your appetite. It's making you crave mm, ooey gooey high calorie foods like chips and ice cream and cookies. <laughs> Um, your week three is a mellower week. It's really quite the opposite of your week two, so you might enjoy um, things, activities that have a mellower tone, like visiting a museum or reading a good book. Uh, you might want to keep some tissues around in your week three, and that's because uh, rising progesterone can trigger a little bit of the blues, a little bit of the waterworks. Um, you could end up tearing up at a car insurance commercial. It's just just a weird side effect of hormones, not a big deal. Uh, during your week three, your libido tends to take a dive. And um, the orgasms you have <laughs> um, are a little bit, they're harder to achieve, a little bit less intense during your week three. Uh, you can blame a uh, drop in testosterone and a rise of progesterone. It's dampening that whole sex thing during your week three, which is fine because during your week three you're also feeling more emotionally connected to your mate so this is a time to connect on a more on a deeper level <laughs> so let's move on to your week four this is your premenstrual week okay yeah your premenstrual week it has deserved the bad rap um, that it gets and what's happening is during these last six days of your cycle estrogen and progesterone are plunging steadily. And because of that, that drop in estrogen can drag down levels of feel-good brain chemicals. These are chemicals that you need to, you know, keep your mood up. And as a result, um, you might get impatient or irritable or blue. Okay, so here's the good news. There are lots of different ways that you can boost those brain chemicals back up, at least temporarily. For instance, treating yourself well, you know, treat yourself to the nice, you know, the expensive chocolate, or, you know, watch your favorite movie, or, you know, wear your favorite booties, draw yourself a bath, just treat yourself well, because um, anything special you do for yourself will prompt a rise in those and those feel-good chemicals, those feel-good brain chemicals, that will reduce the irritation and impatience. So what else is going on in your premenstrual week? Well, um, part of the problem behind your uh, irritability, premenstrual ir irritability, is that sleep isn't as sound during your premenstrual week. That's because a drop in estrogen can pull down serotonin in the brain, and that's a chemical that helps regulate your sleep. So there are a few ways that you can improve your sleep. You don't have to put up with it. Um, I like to drink chamomile tea. It's mildly sedating. Um, if you try it, uh, drink it a couple of hours prior to turning in so you have time to void your bladder. I also wear a sleep mask to block out light um, from the, you know, that I can't block out, you know, like the neighbors uh, <laughs> next to our light. Um, but you know, also if there's a sound that you can't you know, sleep through, you know, wear earplugs. Do anything you can to be proactive about getting better sleep and you'll wake up in actually a better mood because of that. Um, during your premenstrual week, your libido actually rises. Uh, researchers think it's because uh, your body's preparing for menstruation so it's activating nerve endings down below. Well, the one bad thing is that uh, a drop in estrogen can make you a little dry, can reduce lubrication, so just keep a little bottle of lubrication by the bedside and you'll be fine. Um, and that's basically your week four. So that's a brief overview of each week of your monthly cycle. I hope it helps you understand a little bit about how your hormones impact you and what you can expect throughout your cycle. Um, of course, there is a lot more to know and you can find out um, a lot more at my website, hormonehoroscope.com where you can get your free, of course, hormone horoscope, um, as well as tips about how to get the most out of your cycle and really learn about great research about how your hormones are impacting you in so many ways. Um, I also have a free app, the Hormone Horoscope Menstrual Cycle Tracker app, which is a mouthful, uh, but it's really useful. Uh, you can get it at Google Play in the App Store. And of course, you know, you could always um, watch more videos. Thanks so much for watching this one. True story, I got all the props together during my week three. These cookies didn't even make it a day. This is empty, completely empty. And if I'm gonna be completely honest, so is this. <laughs>
professional hazard. <laughs> <laughs>